Greetings folks, this video is going to be all about connecting the FSI6 or FlySky radios to uh, a Matek flight control board using iNav. This was prompted by a, a viewer request from uh, a chap called Ed Garrett from Wales. Thanks very much for the question Ed, that's a good one. Most of the videos on YouTube are about connecting uh, a Tyrannus or FR Sky radios to iNav but uh, not many on the FlySky. So, this is an FSI 6, which is only a six channel radio, which is not ideal uh, for iNav. Ed's question was actually about the FSI 6X, which is a 10 channel radio, which would be absolutely perfect. So I'm gonna show you with the six channel radio. And that means we only have two auxiliary channels. You need one channel for arming and the other channel for modes. Uh, so we're gonna be quite limited about what extra modes we can activate. Before we start, we have to assume a few things your receiver is bound to the radio it won't go anywhere if you don't get past that and your plane is set up to fly straight and level by adjusting the push rods and not having any trims in the radio at 100 percent rates and you've successfully connected your board to your computer and on our configurator and you have the right software on both the board and the right configurator as well that's the starting point if you haven't got to that stage yet you need to do some homework and uh, go and get it working the receiver I'm using is the FSIA6B uh, because that has IBUS and PPM, which is how you connect the receiver to the flight control board. Uh, I can show you both PPM and IBUS connection. They're quite easy, really. FR Sky receivers use SBUS, which is an inverted communication protocol. FlySky uses IBUS and PPM, which are non-inverted. So we have to tell the INAP configurator which protocol we're using. Setting up on the transmitter now, uh, we have two spare channels on this one, so we need two switches assigned to channels. I'll have switch B as the arm switch and switch C as the mode switch. So we go to set up down to auxiliary channels and assign switch B to channel five and switch C to channel six. Now we can do something tricky uh, if we game, you can assign the modes to the variable resistor there or the knob. Of course it makes selecting modes very tricky because you've got to remember the exact angle. Or you could change this for a six position switch, then you would have sort of five different modes to choose from. Some people have done that. That's not a problem with the FSI6X because you've got the extra channels available to you. So we're right to go now. Make sure there are no mixes activated. All of them off. No Elevon mixing, no VTAL mixing, none of that sort of stuff. No throttle cut as well. Need to set up your model as a normal plane with nothing else at all. Only 100% aileron, 100% elevator, 100% throttle, 100% rudder. That's it. Don't do anything else. No trims, no expo, nothing else. Just noticed that... If we go down here, it does have an iBus setup, but that is for setting up individual servos, I think, or an iBus unit of some other sort. That, that's not relevant for us, so forget about that one. To set up failsafe, this is different to uh, Tyrannus radios. We actually need to set up failsafe to send the C switch into the plus 100 position. So, it's channel 6. Turn it on. Put the switch in uh, full down or plus 100. Okay, cancel out of that. Now you make sure that that is actually saved. There we go. So that's the correct fail safe setup for the FlySky radios. So you do have to have one mode switch as the fail safe setting. And it's different to return to home. Fail safe and return to home kind of achieve the same thing but in a different way and to be totally safe you need fail safe as uh, one of the modes so now let's have a look that's our arm switch and that's our mode switch note there are no rates and no expo so here's the receiver FSIA 6B iBus is either of those two connections along the top there took me a while to work that out PPM is channel 1. 
Uh, so we're going to go for IBUS to start off with. So I'll plug it in up on that top right hand side there. That's the orientation or the polarity. Now if you go to the Matec website and look at the wiring diagram for the flight control board that you're using. This is the uh, F411WSE. If you look over here on the receivers it'll show you PPM and IBUS connect to RX2. That's this pin here. And SBUS, remember that's the inverted protocol, connects to this pin here. They're both using UART2, uh, but the SBUS is inverted, the RX2 is not inverted. So I'll plug the board into the computer now and watch the little driver box up here. This is on a, a MacBook, so changes to the correct driver. You have to download the correct drivers for your setup. And I'll click connect, and there we go board is connected. First you have to do your calibrations, I'm not going to go through that. Then we go for the mixer, uh, we've got a flying wing here, uh, that will, if you hit load and apply, that will input the correct mixes for your plane. Uh, outputs, we may have to uh, hit reverse later on if our servos are moving the, in the wrong direction. Presets, I never use presets, I don't like them at all, it's uh, easy enough to do it yourself. Ports, this is the Matec F411 WSE board, which is a great little board, highly recommended. It has two UARTs and two uh, soft serials, so that's two hardware UARTs and two more that you can set up in the software. Usually comes like this with these two UARTs selected, uh, but we want to put the GPS on. We don't need uh, that MSP ticked for that UART one, so uh, we select GPS from the sensors. We are using serial receiver that's PPM, IBUS or SBUS they're all serial protocols so we click that save and reboot then we go to configuration first thing we need to do is select the type of receiver if we're using PPM we'd select that one there we're starting off with IBUS which is a serial protocol so serial receiver and we have to select IBUS down here It'll probably be set at SBUS but that's not going to work for us we need IBUS that's pretty much all you have to do, really. That's the key uh, change that you have to make. Make sure that's IBUS if you're using IBUS. Turn GPS on if you're using GPS. And uh, the rest of it has been covered in other videos, so I won't go through that in this one. Fail safe, we want it to return to home in a fail safe. Pretty much all the rest of this is uh, standard across all radios, so there are lots of other videos for that. Now we get to the receiver and if the receiver isn't connected, isn't bound, or something else has gone wrong, this is how it'll appear. You'll get nothing there. Now I'll return the transmitter on, and you can see they pop up there because I've got everything connected. So the receiver is on, it's connected correctly to the board, and if we move the sticks, we'll see things moving here. If we move the switches, we'll see that moving in channel 5 and 6. The way you need to set this up is that when you push the sticks up to the right, they'll increase like that, which is correct. That's what we want. If they're not doing that, you need to reverse the channels on your radio. This is the only time you do something on the radio, other than standard setup. Now, modes. Because I'm limited to only two channels, uh, there's not a lot I can do with modes. So what I have is the arm mode on channel 5, which is switch B, and you can see that working there. You'll note the arm indicator here isn't turning blue when we arm the, try and arm the board because uh, we don't have GPS lock or anything at the moment so it's not going to let us arm it. Now for the other modes, because I only have one three position switch and uh, one channel left to me, I'm going to choose manual in the middle position of switch C. Change it to channel 6. So that's now manual mode. You can see that is activating because you can always act activate manual mode. Manual mode is kind of essential if something goes wrong, you can switch to manual mode and get full control of the plane back. And in the lower position, we need to put fail safe. And change that to channel 6. There we go. So you just watch the little blue, blue tag here, and that shows you whether it's going to the correct range. And of course, fail safe isn't going to work because the, the plane's too close. We don't have GPS locks or anything like that. So that is the way it is going to look at the moment. 
Now what I'm going to do is uh, on the radio I'm going to change channel 6 to the VRB variable resistor B and we'll see how we can be a bit tricky and get lots more modes. And now I'm moving VRB, you can see the little blue tag moving up and down. So you can actually set up a different mode for each little movement of that switch if you want to. As I said, it's going to be very tricky to work out what position it's in. You may have to just rely on your, your view in the goggles. If you had a six position switch, you'd be able to confidently click from mode to mode using that. Now, why have we only got two modes on switch C when there's three positions? Well, you always need a position where there are no modes selected, and that puts it into acro mode, or it shows up as air. If you have the air mode permanently enabled, I would actually recommend not having air mode permanently enabled. You don't really need it. All it means is that when you put this throttle down to zero, uh, you don't have stabilisation. You're just flying normally. But if you've got the throttle at zero, you're going to be gliding anyway, so uh, it's likely to be a, a stable plane anyway. Up position of switch C, there are no modes selected. And to be honest, acro mode is uh, the mode that I use most of all. It's a nice stabilised but not self-levelling mode, and that's what I tend to fly around in. Then you have manual if something goes wrong and uh, fail safe if you fly beyond range or turn the radio off by mistake. Let's turn the radio off and we'll see. You'll see the little red parachute has popped up so that tells you that fail safe is working. Turn the transmitter back on again and it goes blue and that goes uh, grey again. So that shows you that fail safe, loss of signal fail safe is actually working which is great. Alright, let's switch to uh, PPM mode now. Ports, configuration, there we go. Say we've connected the uh, receiver via PPM. Change that to PPM, save and reboot. And you have to go and turn PPM output on uh, in your receiver setup on the radio. So now, there we go, that's all working properly. So PPM or iBus. So that shows that you can get away with using the Flysky i6 radio and it's just at six channels. It's a pretty limited experience. With the extra channels on the FSI6X, you could assign other switches to other channels and then be able to activate things like auto trim and auto tune, altitude hold or combination of altitude hold and uh, position hold for a, a loiter mode and auto launch as well. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching.